Tesla's got batteries in iMac colors, the physics behind the age of Ultron, and OK Google, your anti-phishing tool still needs work. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 329 for Friday, May 1st, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Dropbox for Business. Dropbox for Business lets your team sync and share files just like Dropbox. Take advantage of the existing usage and familiarity of Dropbox and don't waste time trying to find a different solution. Visit dropbox.com slash business for a free 14-day trial. That's dropbox.com slash business. Welcome and happy May Day. I am Megan Maroney, and this is the show where we talk about the big tech headlines and talk to the geniuses behind the headlines. And today we will talk to an actual genius, a physics genius. Now on to the big news of the day. Tesla made an interesting, although expected, announcement last night at an event at the Tesla facility near Los Angeles. Tesla and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk introduced Tesla Energy, a suite of batteries for home businesses and utilities to help wean the world off fossil fuels. The home version of the battery is available now. It's called Powerwall. It'll cost $3,000 for a seven kilowatt hour model and $3,500 for the 10 kilowatt hour model. That does not include the cost of installation, the power inverter, or the solar panels from which the battery will draw the energy. But according to Elon Musk, it also comes in several different colors. And unlike Henry Ford before him, he really means it. The batteries really do come in different colors. So what does this all mean for us? Should we all run out and buy the Powerwall? Here to explain Tesla's announcement and the physics behind the Tesla home battery is Rhett Elaine, wired blogger, physics geek, and author of Geek Physics, Surprising Answers to the Planet's Most Interesting Questions. Welcome, Rhett. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So you wrote an excellent post today on the Wired blog about the physics behind Tesla's announcement. So I have some questions for you. I have a 1,300 square foot house. It's relatively sunny here in Petaluma. I have solar panels. Should I get this battery? I mean, I think if you have solar panels, then you should get this battery. Uh, but the question is what color? Right. <laughs> it's true. I like the red one. Then get the red. <laughs> um, I wonder if you can paint them. That's, if you're putting that them on the wall. That's a good question. Yeah. So yeah. it goes right on the wall in your living room, right? Or wherever. Is that really? That's right. <laughs> really? Right. That's, that's, I, think that, I think you can put it wherever you want. I'm not sure. They didn't really say exactly where you could put it, but... If you could have it in different colors, that seems to imply you'd want it to look nice. Right. So. And exactly. I have wanted a Tesla for a long time. So I would rather pay $3,000 or $3,500 for one than, you know, what I thought I was going to have to pay for the Tesla's, you know, the car. <laughs> right. Right. But I mean, you should get one if you have solar panels, because the way it works right now, you don't even use that energy from the solar panel. You just sell it back to the electric company. Right. And if you have the battery then you can actually store that energy and use it yourself. You don't have to share. It's, you know, it's better that way. Right, because I don't, I mean, I don't even really understand. We get the bills and, you know, it says how much power I'm sending back and, you know, we hardly have to pay anything, which is great, but installing the solar pan panels costs a lot of money. So it was really just a thing we did because it's better for the environment, not because we're, you know, raking in the cash. So if I get a battery like this, will, even, will I be able to make a lot of money off of my solar panels? Or save money because um, you won't be selling the power to, to anyone, but you won't see when you sell the power to the power company, they get to decide how much you sell it for. Right. And and so you have no control over that. You don't have an option who to sell it to. It's just the power company. Right. But so, if you store it, then it's yours. You can do whatever you want with it. Right. So if uh, I wanted also, to go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Also, if the if the power goes out, you're kind of self-sufficient uh, in a way. You, you're almost moving towards being off the grid. Right. That, so that's the goal. It's not like I would um, pay people to come over and plug their stuff in and make money that yeah, way. Well, you could do that. That's not a bad idea. Charge admission <laughs> to come charge your phones. Right. So, so what exactly does 10 kilowatt hour mean? Can you break it down for me? I mean, how many kilowatts does it take to leave a light bulb on all day, for example? Yeah. So a kilowatt is a unit of power. It says how fast you're using the energy. And a kilowatt hour is a unit of energy. It's, it's an actual amount. So, I mean, it's easy to confuse those two because they both have watt in them. But uh, a one kilowatt hour, the unit of energy is about what you need to run one light bulb for a whole day. Uh, that's So you think about it in terms of light bulbs. One kilowatt hour is one light bulb per day. 
10 kilowatt hours would be 10 bulbs in one day for running all day. Okay, so uh, you say that also the other thing is that houses run on AC current, but the battery, the, this Tesla battery gives us DC current. So do we have to convert the DC current to the AC current ourselves? That's right. Well, I mean, you'd have a, a device in there to do that. But the same thing happens with your car. Uh, if you plug in, if you have one of the outlets in your car, then your car battery runs on DC. Your laptop actually runs on DC too, but it has an AC plug. So you need to have a DC to AC converter in your car. Uh, you can also buy those that plug into the cigarette lighter. It's the same thing as that, but bigger. And, and that way you can take the DC current from the battery and make AC stuff to run all your household stuff, half of which you're just going to convert back to DC, but that's just the way it works. Right. So, so if I didn't have solar panels, uh, does it make sense to get one of these batteries? And, you know, does it make economic sense, I guess? Probably not economic sense. What you could do with, without the solar panels, well, if, if you had a, a wind generator, you could do that too. You could store energy from the wind. Um, but if you didn't have either of those, you could store energy from the power company at night when they charge lower rates and then use it during the day. So it could reduce your power bill a little bit that way. Uh, and if the power flickers and goes out for a few, a few hours, you could run your house uh, on it if you had the uh, DC to AC converter. Right. So you assigned some homework in your article, and I'm wondering if you will give me the answers to the homework <laughs> if I ask you. But you're nicely. not going to share with anyone else, right? So no, you're, you're just gonna keep no, it no, no one watches this show. Okay, no. that's fine. Then okay. I'll share. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the questions you asked was, how long could you run your smartphone using the power wall as your battery? Yeah, so one of the things I do on my blog is to assign homework questions. Usually they're questions that I don't know the answer to, uh, and just because they're interesting questions. Those are the best questions, ones that no one knows the answer to. But this one I actually did calculate for you. Um, are you going to use the whiteboard but, behind you to help me? I, <laughs> I could. Um, the, if you look at, I looked at an iPhone 5S. Uh, it has about, if you, if you got the energy stored in that in kilowatt hours, which you wouldn't do, but if you did, it's 0 0.0055 kilowatt hours. So if you take that and you divide by, you take the 10 kilowatt hours and divide by that, you get um, about 1,800 days. And that, that assumes 100% efficiency. So that's, that's about five years if it's 100% efficient. But I would say three years. You could run it off your phone, your phone off that for about three years. Okay, interesting. So I guess the idea is, like, the interesting part is how you would get at this answer, the, the way that you would get at it, which is interesting. Yeah, that's, so you've got you to look at how much energy is in a phone. Uh, you got to estimate how long a phone lasts, right? Uh, you'd say a phone battery lasts about a day. And then you once you get the units the same, and both in terms of kilowatt hours, it's just a ratio. Right. So uh, how much do you know about like the power pack versus the power wall, which is the, uh, the thing that uh, Elon Musk announced last night for utilities or for big businesses? Right. I mean, the only thing I could figure out uh, searching online w w and from listening to the the presentation from Elon Musk was that the power pack's just bigger. Uh, so it's instead of 10 kilowatt hours, it's 100 kilowatt hours, and you can group them together up to one gigawatt hour. Or if it was back to the future, it'd be a gigawatt hour. So, uh, so that's just bigger. It's just the same thing, just bigger. Right, okay. So while I have you here, I wanted to also get your take on today's other big tech news story, The Avengers Age of Ultron, which premieres today. Have you seen it already? No, I, I have not. No, you were busy busy listening to This Week in Tech, you told me <laughs> right. earlier, so you couldn't see it. Uh, so I know you've done some physics in the past uh, about some of the Avenger movies, and, and even you've done some physics equations just based on age of the Age of Ultron previews. What have you learned so far? Well, there's a lot you can do. You know, they, they have so many different trailers. You can pick uh, a whole bunch of different scenes to inspire you to do some cool physics homework. And that's really what I do. I do my own physics homework by looking at the trailers. Uh, one of the favorite ones I did was to look at, in the trailer, Black Widow's riding a motorcycle and she picks up Captain America's shield as she zooms by. And so I, I calculated uh, the, I, the force you would need to pick that up uh, as, you, as you go by. It's not easy to do. Uh, you got to make a lot of assumptions and calculations, but that's that's what I did calculate. That was a fun one. And another one you did of the past Avenger movies was uh, you wrote about how you could tell how much Captain America's shield weighs just by measuring how far he gets knocked back when the Winter Soldier throws the shield at him. Um, how, right. how does that work? So in that case, 
you have, uh, it, in physics, we you look at momentum. And when two things interact, we would say momentum is conserved. So the momentum of the shield before he hits Captain America, uh, before it hits Captain America, is the same as the two of those combined together as he slides. So if you know the mass of, of Steve Rogers and you estimate the recoil speed, then you can calculate the final momentum. And when you set that equal to the initial momentum and the speed of the shield, you can get the mass. And that's that's what I did in that case. You get a mass of about 40 pounds for the shield, which, you know, that's not, if it's a metal shield, that's pretty heavy, but, uh, you know, it's, it seems plausible. Right. So can you explain the physics of James Spader? Yes. <laughs> now, I, you know, I haven't seen the movie, so I don't, and he wasn't in the trailer too much, right? He just says a few things, but... Uh, it's hard to it's hard to exactly pin down James Spader. Right, maybe have to do some more experiments. <laughs> okay. So, do you teach undergrads, Rhett? Right. We have uh, only undergraduate courses here, so I teach all the courses for uh, physics majors. We rotate around, so I get to teach lots of different things from and, time to time. And what university? Can you remind me? This is Southeastern Louisiana University. Well, I think it would be pretty exciting to take your class. I mean, based on I did not have any college classes at all like this that that did the physics of movies so uh it sounds great thank you so much for coming on rhett elaine is a physics blogger you have some great books about physics you have another book about the physics of angry birds are you working on anything new that you can talk about uh, i'm working on one book um for the institute of physics it's a european uh physics association i'm writing a book about just video analysis how do you do it uh, examples and things like that. I, I use that a lot in my blog. So that's one of the things I'm working on right now. Well, thank you so much. You can see what uh, Rhett is working on it at RJ Elaine. That's A-L-L-A-I-N. Thank you so much for joining us, Rhett. Well, thank you very much for having me on. Take care. Coming up, OK Google can start your car. And what happens when Alibaba posts a job ad for an attractive woman to entertain programmers? But first, many of you use Dropbox. We do too. And at Twit, we use it to sync and share files, everything from sharing audio MP3s, large draft graphic files to invoices and program schedules. People in over 4 million businesses throughout the world also use Dropbox. You can grow your business. Dropbox for Business is the better way to manage accounts, manage billing, and have visibility and control over your data. Dropbox for Business lets you do just that, and you don't have to waste time finding a different solution. So what is Dropbox for Business? It's the same easy Dropbox experience your employees already know and love and trust. That means less training and more productivity. There's simple storage and sharing for any type of file on any platform and any device. Dropbox for Business never runs out of space. Each user starts off with one terabyte and it's easy to expand. The staff can collaborate with team members and securely invite and control access to outside partners, clients, and vendors. And most importantly for IT professionals, you have control. Dropbox for Business has powerful admin controls like remote wipe, intuitive sharing, and permission controls, plus complete audit logs. This way, IT can make sure only the right people get access to sensitive company data. Dropbox for Business integrates with third-party security and administration solutions such as SIM, DLP, and eDiscovery for even more control. And last but not least, the robust Dropbox for Business infrastructure uses encryption for file data in transit and at rest, plus segmentation and hashing to anonymize files. Extra security features are always available like single sign-on and two-step verification. Want to give it a try? Take advantage of your employees' familiarity with Dropbox and sign up for Dropbox for Business. Visit dropbox.com slash business for a free 14-day trial for Dropbox for Business. That's dropbox.com slash business. On to a few more stories we're following today. We've got a few more Google headlines. Do you want the bad news first or the good news first? Bad news, obviously. Everyone always wants the bad news first. On Wednesday of this week, Google released a Chrome extension designed to help protect your Google account by warning you when you're about to enter a password into a fraudulent website. The extension is called Password Alert, and security researchers have already found ways to bypass it twice. The first exploit was announced just 24 hours after Password Alert was released, and today the roughly 30,000 people who have downloaded the extension were asked to install a security update due to another exploit. Okay, Google, let's try a little harder next time. And now for the good news, Engadget reports that Okay, Google on Android can now tell you what song is playing. It can even start your car for you. 
They do this by adding support for third-party apps like the Lincoln Start My Car app. How many phones did I just set off by saying, OK, Google? Should I stop saying, OK, Google? OK, Google. <laughs> Music streaming service Groove Shark shut down today after a decade of providing you with your favorite music and also infringing copyrights. Groove Shark used the old fashioned music sharing model of allowing users to upload their own music. And they claimed that because Drew Groove Shark wasn't doing the uploading, they weren't liable if they just happened to be the one streaming the music. Not so. According to a notice on their website, shutting down was part of their settlement with the major record companies. And finally, according to online news source, Quartz, Chinese internet company Alibaba recently posted this job opening on their website. Alibaba opening programmer encouragement specialist. The ad said, you didn't read that wrong. This isn't a job for a programmer. It's for a programmer, exclamation point, encouragement, exclamation point, specialist, exclamation point. Job requirements included recognizably good looks, an appearance that is adequately stunning to programmers. Even a quick glance at you should excite and inspire them greatly. The listing went on to compare their preferred candidate to a popular Korean actress as well as a well-known Japanese porn star. After the listing went viral and Alibaba was roundly criticized on social media, the company took down the job posting. Thank you, social media. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. A while back, I asked you to tag or send us your selfies watching or listening to Tech News Tonight. We had a little break in the flow, but recently received some more images. So today's TN2 selfie fan of the day is Brian Starr, who wrote in, I love the show. I listened to you driving home. I haven't seen your eyebrows or your Spock ears, which I have. Thank you. Thanks for the email, Brian, and the photo. Now I've seen what you look like from this picture right here and from the pictures of you on the website StarTrek.com, but I haven't heard your voice, so I guess we are even. That's StarTrek.com with two R's. Send us your selfies, tag your pictures with hashtag TN2Selfie on Twitter, Google+, Instagram, or via email to TN2 at twit.tv and tell us a little bit about yourself. We might choose to show your selfie on the show. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. And you can also watch live at live.twit.tv every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thank you for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.